I'm Eddie Cannell. And I'm Tom Cannell. Welcome, everyone. This is the Mortgage Brothers Podcast Show, and today is April 5th. And this is your Greater Phoenix Real Estate Update. And remember, this is for informational purposes only. This is not financial advice. And if you like what we're doing here, be sure to subscribe, like the video, and comment. Tom and I will always get back to you right away if you comment or email us or call us. Or call us. We love talking to people. So Tom and I, we're the Mortgage Brothers. Uh, we have a team right here in Phoenix. This is where we do our business right here in the Valley. And we want to make sure everyone knows really where the real estate market is. And we're going to be doing these updates more often. Yeah. And we talk about interest rate updates, but this is a real estate, more of a deeper dive into different segments. And I think you're really going to like this. So the first thing we want to really talk about is the population of Phoenix, because I think a lot of people, uh, when they think of Phoenix, they really lack the context of where the city's been. In 1950, the population had, a, it was only 221,000. And we had our great grandfather came to Phoenix in 1922. I don't even I don't know what those numbers were back then, but it was just mostly dirt roads, even the yeah. Camelback and, and Central. They probably weren't tracking numbers back then. <laughs> they weren't probably. But in 1950, right after World War II, about 221,000 uh, was the population. Currently, we're at 4.6 million, and a lot of forecasts show that in two, by 2035 the average consensus is about uh, 5.3 million. Yeah, and why we're showing this is regardless of where you are on the you know metric of buying or selling, the point is, is Phoenix is a great place to be. I mean, look at the population growth. People yeah. want to come here. Absolutely, and something we're going to show too is, you know, a lot of people have talked about the growth. I mean, just 20 years ago, 2003, it was right about 3 million. Just to have a little context for just 20 years ago. Now, this is done by the Maricopa Association of Governments. It was, a uh, again, another forecast. They were showing by 2030, 5.2 million, but they even have a forecast out to 2050, 6 point, almost seven, seven yeah. almost 6.7 wow. million. Or yeah, yeah, so almost 7 million. And again, all those industries that are coming here, the tech industries are really starting to move here. And again, we wanna make sure that, we're gonna be re reiterating this a lot, population, people coming in, it's something that will have a lot of effect on real estate. Yeah, and a lot of the big market, you know, industry here in Phoenix is construction. Why? Because our population has always been growing. Yeah. And this is why all the hospitality, all the residential, all the office that needs to support it, the population is growing, which is a great thing for you being a, a homeowner or future homeowner. Yeah, and if you're reading news or national news and you hear about these national statistics of where real estate is, again, nationally, it will be very different from what's happening locally. Phoenix is one of these cities, Arizona really as a state is, has so much growth that it will tend to be stronger, you know, through and, and through either recessions, tough times, and really, I think it's going to be able to bounce back much faster than a lot of other cities in the country. Mm -hmm. So the local data is really, really important. That's what we want to show you here. Just one more piece kind of on a macro level, Maricopa County, wage growth, I mean, because jobs have a lot to do with how healthy the economy is. We had a seven and a half percent increase in wage. Now that's inflation. Yeah. I mean, we've had a lot of inflation yep. over the last couple of years, but wages have inflated. Um, and some people out there might be going, man, I didn't get a, I didn't get a raise seven and a half percent interest or a, a you know, a job increase. Yeah. You know, on my, on my wages, my salary went up 2% or whatever it was, or, you know, anyway, seven and a half percent, that is the average. And then my guess is that a lot of people who were, have gotten new jobs or received new jobs, new employers, yeah, have affected that number. Yep. Unemployment rate, very important to look at. This goes back to 19, about 1990, uh, this whole chart. The average unemployment is about 4.8%. We are at 2.9%. It's very low unemployment. There's a lot of jobs out there. Yeah, and, and it, what, what does this mean? It basically means that we're in a really healthy economy, yeah. which which is a great thing. Again, we, we have kind of a juxtaposed situation with inflation, where inflation isn't like that really good, good you know job market, but, but it is what it is. So we're in a very positive job market right now. Absolutely. And okay, so now we're going to move to, this is an index. They call it the Purchase Application Index. It shows what is the strength of mortgage applications for purchases. And this goes all the way back to about 1990 as well. 
and you can see that the, the in the recent peak, January 20th, 2022, I, I put this line right here. This is from January 2022. That was just a little over a year ago. We've seen the decrease of applications. Right. And it's hard for me to think that during COVID, well, January 2022, that was, yeah, there was, there was still COVID, mm -hmm. that the applications were as high as they were. Yeah. But the interest rates were so low. It was, it was almost forcing people, yeah. you know, to go out and, and purchase. You can kind of see that canyon right here to the left of that area, right in here. That's where the COVID, all of a sudden, every everything stopped, but it didn't take long. A couple months later, app, mortgage applications for purchases went way up. Um, again, interest rates have gone up over the last year, so it really kind of correlates. Interest rates have gone up, purchase applications have gone down. Now, this is from the Cromford Report that tracks the MLS data right here in Maricopa County. And they are showing the peak of the median sales price was May 2022. And it's an interesting thing, like the purchase applications peaked in January of 2022, but it kind of has a, there's a, a lag, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, all that, all those people who were taking applications, they were purchasing and purchasing and purchasing, interest rates were going up, but they kind of hit that peak in May of 2022, and then the median home price started going down. Right now, we're at about 420000 for the median. So price. this is just a quick little tiny story. I was watching this market go up and up and up, and I was thinking, when is it ever going to go down? One way to make it go down is to buy. So what did I do? I bought in May of 22. Isn't that amazing? That's when you did. I did. Yeah, yeah. So right it was right May of 22, <laughs> literally that month. Um, and, and we needed that. So I'm laughing because it was a purchase I needed to do. But still, yeah. it's interesting. That was the peak. And it's come down and you can see, you know, that it has rebounded or that it is rebounding. Um, but uh, but yeah, there's a peak established and that's always good to know. Yes. Yeah. For in 2023, since January, the there has been a lot of resistance. I mean, from bot, there's been a lot a lot of extra buyer demand. Now there's two things going on. We've seen an increase of buyer demand, even though there's not a lot of buyers out there right now, there's not a lot of listings out there. There's only right now recorded about 12,000, almost 13,000 uh, listings. That is a very low historical number of listings. Yeah. And when you get on the MLS, you actually see a higher number. So that probably takes out a certain property type. Yeah. There, there's got to be some other, maybe it's raw land it, or- It's any properties that are under contract. It's not counting those. So, okay. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. Well, that, yeah. That's probably what it'd be then. Yeah. Okay. So, and that goes back to 2019. Just wanted to show you kind of how that we saw that peak in listings up here, and everyone was freaking out. It was about twenty thousand listings, and everyone's like, "Oh my gosh, we're gonna, you know, all the everyone's gonna dump their homes on the market." It never happened. Right. A lot of people who are in their homes right now are, you know, they're sitting on these three percent interest rates, and we haven't seen a lot of people selling their homes. So yeah, we, and that's a really, really big thing. We talked about people being locked into their homes, not physically, but financially, because of the low interest rates. Look at this. No one's really selling their home. Yeah. That's a very big part of this. So something that is happening is uh, that's, you know, more or less unusual. This chart goes all the way back to 2007. And you can see that seller concessions are at near an all-time high. That means when a buyer is making an offer on our home, you know, Tom and I, we see contracts all the time, you know, uh, doing the mortgages. The sellers are giving a lot, m most of our, well, half of the contracts we, re we receive from uh, real estate agents have sellers giving a concession. Yeah. Some money to pay buyers closing costs and prepaids. What's in interesting is this last probably five days of contracts, the concessions have gone down. Yes. But again, that's almost too recent information. Yeah. It's a very, and again, we're going to continue to uh, keep this updated. So again, be sure to subscribe if you like what we're doing here. And- Okay, so this is related. We have the median, we have the median home price, and then we have the median price subtracting the seller concession. Okay, so on this slide, we see the median home price, which is four hundred and twenty thousand. And then what this chart's really good at doing is it's showing what is this, what is the real median sales price if you subtract the seller concessions. So if in this case, you can see the median home price is 420. But if you can make out this, it says 415 is the net. That's the net median home price. That means the average seller concession is $5,000. Yeah. In other words, when, when the blue and the orange line are matched, 
there are no concessions. When they start pulling away, when they start pulling away a lot, that's just when those concessions are increasing. Yeah. So right in right through 2020, it wasn't until 2022 we started seeing the the seller concessions affect really the, the net median home price. And okay, average days on the market. This matters a lot to, to buyers and sellers. I mean, sellers are out there wondering how long is it going to take to sell my home? It's going to take about currently, if it's priced right, about 65 days or so. And that's pretty much the average over the last 20 years. Yeah, look at that. Going all the way back to 2001. Yeah, it, you know, look at 2008, 2007, when there, all those foreclosures were occurring, it was maybe about 130 days on the market. Oh, I bet you it felt like 360 days. Yeah, for sure. And then back during the 2020, 21, gosh, it was in the 30s. Surprised it wasn't like in the, in the single digits. <laughs> I guess, yeah, some cities it probably was. Okay, so- there's another, it's another way to look at it. We call it the months of supply. How much, what this means is this. If no one in Maricopa County were to sell their home, all the sellers just stop putting their homes on the market. Right. Those that have their homes in the market, they stay on the market, but yeah. there are no new homes actually being listed. So we say, okay, all homeowners out there, you can't put your home on the market anymore. It would take two and a 2.2 months for all the de buyer demand to purchase all the remaining active listings. Yeah, homes. So the, literally, if you, yeah, two and a half months of supply mm -hmm. literally means you have enough homes to satisfy two and a half months worth of borrowers or buyers. Now they're probably going to have to buy a house that they don't really like that much. Yeah. So it would never happen that way, but that's how they calculate it. And, you know, I think that a lot of people are spoiled because they, you know, it, two and a half, two point two month, two months. That's quick. Mm. Historically, in the past, I mean, going back 10, 20 years ago, even in thirty years ago, six months was a very. It was six months. It would you know, a lot of people were a lot of a lot of the experts would say it would take about six months of supply. Now, now do we know? Does this include time to close? So is, are you getting an offer w with, within uh, about a month? No, this is just taking the amount of people who are closing every month, the active listings, yeah, and okay. it's really dividing that number by the number of buyers, the average buyers a month. Okay. Okay. Very important for people who are uh, either landlords or you're going to be renting, or you're currently renting. Very or, good. Yeah. Or yeah, you're renting. You're trying to figure out like, like, what is the market right now? Right. I've or had this home for 20 years. They've been paying the same rent. What is mar what is market rent? Yeah, and if maybe you want to buy a, a, a you know a real estate or a home to make it a rental. But just to give you some context, in 2015, the average home out there in Maricopa County was basically renting for I think it was about 75 cents. That was a $2,000 home would rent for an average of $1,600 a month. You know yeah, that makes and, sense. And you have a 2,000 square foot home. I think so, yeah. it's a $2,000. Oh home. yeah, a 2,000 square foot home would rent for $1,600. Today, at $1.32 a square foot, that would be $2,600. Incredible. A thousand more dollars. Yeah. And it's 66% more over these, you know, uh, it's actually seven or eight, actually, with that seven, eight years. But the it is 66%. But I, we've, hit, we've heard a lot of people, and a lot of you out there know that a lot of people have complained that rents in the last two, three years have gone up like 30% alone. Yep. A lot, really a lot of our calls are, listen, I, I don't want to rent anymore because I can't afford it. Yeah. Now, mortgages are, are higher than what they used to be, but still, that's just the one of the main reasons why people are wanting to get out of that tenant seat is because they're tired of paying these high rents. So a lot of people ask too, hey, aren't the foreclosures really high right now? Aren't there a lot of people? I mean, the interest rates are high. No one can afford them. I mean, are there a lot of people uh, going into foreclosure? The answer is no. This is the notices of trustee sale that are tracked back to, into the 90s. And you can see, the, so a notice of trustee sale is this. When you can't make your mortgage payment for 90 days, the bank is going to give you a notice. And they also give the public a notice. They, they publicly notify everybody. There's a website where you can actually see the, the notices. The Maricopa County Recorder's Office will show it too. But the point is, these are notices... So you're not and in foreclosure. And this is a notice basically, yeah, saying that you're not in foreclosure, but you are going to be in it very soon, pay up, or you will be in foreclosure. Yeah. So historically very low. You can obviously see that huge peak there in the 2007 or 2010 era. But now this is the trustee deeds. So 
you first you're given a notice of a trustee sale, like you, you're being given a warning, hey, your, your home is going to go into foreclosure. That's just a warning. That's just a notice. And this is the showing how many are actually going through the foreclosure process. And you can barely, I bet you if you're watching this on a, your phone, you could you probably can't even see these tiny little uh, bar charts here, but it's hardly even noticeable the number of homes that are actually going through foreclosure are at a record low. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So, and the orange being, again, that reverting back to the mm -hmm. beneficiary, which, which is the lender. Right. The orange here, the bank. So there's a lot of bad information out there on YouTube, articles being written about high foreclosures. Absolutely. That's a myth. Okay. And then this is the Cromford demand index for both supply and demand. So the red line is basically buyers. And the blue line is sellers. When the red line is above the blue line, that means you have more buyers uh, demand than seller demand. And right now, we're pretty close to a balance. But you'll notice this 100 mark. When those numbers are below 100, that means you just have, we have both low demand because the average normal markets are right here at 100. We have low demand and, and, yeah, low, and supply. low supply. So low, not a lot of buyers, not a lot of sellers. And if you want to understand this chart, I think it's really good to go back to 2006, 2007, showing that delta between the amount of demand and the amount of supply. Well, of course, you remember what happened back then. Of course, we had a huge supply with very low demand. Now fast forward it and you, you can see quite opposite you yeah. know, that, that picture. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Foreclosure pendings. We're going to show this just to drive home a point here. The pending, the average uh, pending foreclosures monthly is about 5,000. That's the average historically. We're at about 1,000. And, and this wow. is, yeah, this is just something. Super low. Yeah. It, it's really low. It's, you know, 2019 is here in green. Just to show you some perspective, that was a pretty, well, not, it was, that was still below average, but we're even below that. And right here. So again, that is still a myth of the foreclosures being anything that we are worried about. Yeah, now there are there are people that are still struggling, but those homes just simply aren't going through that process, and they're getting picked up and gobbled up by the investors. Yeah. So they're not even that. There's still enough demand to pick that stuff up. Otherwise, it would go, go through the process. Okay. So this is the heat map that we. Someone says just said, okay, Mortgage Brothers. <laughs> What is, where are the, what cities are actually doing really well? What are the strong cities? What are the weak cities? This is going to give you kind of a bird's eye view. You can see here, if you can, the red cities are the ones, or this red, the red on the map is where it's a lot of demand, buyer demand. And the cooler uh, colors are where you have less demand. So Chandler, some Mesa, some Gilbert, Levine, some in Peoria, those are leading the markets in demand. And we're going to show this right here just to give you this really clean way of looking at it. The Cromford Report shows that Chandler is leading. Again, the, most, the biggest takeaway is this. The Cromford Market Index, it, the higher the number, the better or the stronger the, the stronger that city is doing. So we see Chandler in the lead, followed by Fountain Hills, Glendale, Phoenix, uh, Gilbert Mesa. And then you go all the way down to Buckeye. Buckeye is the weakest. And below, so 14 out of the 17 cities are above 100, which means there's more buyers than sellers. Yeah. Very better. good. A very good um, metric there to to look at, you know, but again, Chandler being that top market, yeah. Buckeye being the slowest market. Very interesting. So I hope everyone liked this overview of the real estate market. We're going to continue to do these updates to make sure that you as a seller, you as a buyer are always informed be sure to subscribe, comment, and like. Take care, everybody. All right. Thank you, folks. Thank you for watching the Mortgage Brothers podcast. If you have any questions, email us at team at azmortgagebrothers.com. And if you like this content, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the Mortgage Brothers team.